How's it going, Mentees? The Uncanny Omar here from Near Min Condition. And today I'm going to take an advanced look at the official handbook of the Marvel Universe Omnibus. So please stay tuned. Now, before we get started, I'd like to say a big thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of the book. Um, in advance, because this book comes out on November 6th, and then a few weeks later, everywhere like Amazon and uh, Barnes & Noble. But on November 6th, you can get it from places like CheapGraphicNovels.com. Speaking of cheap graphic novels, this episode is brought to you by CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. Right now, they are currently running their Halloween horror sale, offering up to 80% off 450 spine-tingling titles. This sale runs through October 31st while supplies last. Some of the deals this week include BPRD Hell on Earth Volume 1 hardcover, originally $34.99, but at 50% off, it's $17.49. As well as the Crimson Complete Omnibus. The retail price is $125, but at 50% off, it is $62.50. You can find the sale by clicking on the banner on Cheap Graphic Novels homepage or by clicking in the link in the description below. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. Now let's take a look at the book itself. Here's the cover. It's a John Byrne image from an actual cover of the books. Um, here is the covers, and I'll explain what they are in case you don't know what it is. And here's what it collects. The official handbook of the Marvel Universe, issues 1 through 15. I thought they came out in 82, but this is 83. Uh, I could be wrong. Of course I am. Uh, retail price is $75, and it is right at 576 pages long. Here is the spine of the book with Johnny on it. Now let's take a look under the dust jacket. So what we have is that image from the cover just blown up. So it looks like a splash page on the cover. Now let's crack it open and talk a little bit about what this series was. The official... Handbook of the Marvel Universe. And here's all the creators behind it, including the head writer, which who was Mark Grunewald at the time. All the pencilers, even Mark Grunewald drew some stuff. That's really cool. Mike Grell, you see a lot of names here. John Buscema, Sal Buscema, Al Milgram, Dave Simmons, Bill Sienkiewicz. I mean, just so many recognizable names in here. And this came out uh, in 82-83 is when this originally came out. Here's all the researchers, Peter David's included among them, Bob Harris, who became editor-in-chief, Roger Stern. That's why these guys know everything about the Marvel universes. That make that makes sense. Roger Stern, Peter David. Surprised I don't see Kurt Busick's name there. And not to be overlooked, but here are the folks that put the book together. Uh, Mark Beasley, Caitlin O'Connell, Jeff York is in charge of the research and layout. Always like to give those fine folks a proper shout-out. All right, here's the table of contents. And I know one thing that most of you are going to ask me, or, or those rather old enough to remember, is ROM in here. You know, that's the first thing I looked at, too. Guess what? He is. ROM's bio is in here. So what these are are just uh, a collection of uh, 15 issues that came out, like I said, in 82, 83, that is just literally the bio of the character, you know, from alphabetical order. And then they have the diseased later on the people that are inactive and no longer or no longer alive. And I think they also have like vehicles and things like that or weapons. I, I can't really recall. That's one that I never really looked at a lot. I looked at the characters. I love this stuff. So it kind of gives you like their real name, uh, their occupation, their legal status, identity, whether it's secret or known. Uh, they also tell you the first appearance, which I think is very important. And then a quick synopsis of their powers and their weapons they wield and who they are and what team they belong with. And I love that about this. Like you may have seen, I think in 2005, 2006, they did the a handbook for the uh, um, Annihilation comic. Uh, but they also did like an all new Marvel or handbook of the Marvel Universe and I think those have been collected Ariel so it's a little outdated of course because you know it's almost 40 years old but so some code names are different this is of course Kitty Pride or Shadow Cat as she became later on but during that time she was known as Ariel the Asgardians the Avengers so it gives you the group affiliations the Avengers Mansion I guess another way I could describe these are like guide sheets right 
far as like what the characters are currently wearing at the time or what their powers are. And I wonder if this was just meant for writers and artists. And then they eventually said, hey, let's just release it to the public. I'm sure everybody wants to know, you know, the current status of the blob. Sorry, it's just the page I turned to. Whether they're superheroes or villains, it didn't matter. They're all in here. I'm just flipping through different pages. Different artists uh, did different characters. I always love the design of the Constrictor. I know he's goofy and not a character that a lot of people take seriously, but I've always loved that design. Uh, Dr. Doom's Castle. Oh, Dr. Doom's Castle. That's what's up. Kind of gives you a breakdown of where everything is. The dungeons. I don't see public bathrooms here, though. Dad joke, right? I'm uh, I'm watching my kids this weekend, so bear with me. Um, Marvel Universe D through G. So, yeah, you kind of get the idea of what this are. Now, I remember getting these on the cheap, like when I first started collecting comics here in America. So this must have been like 87. I found a bunch at a flea market, and they were like all beat up, 25 cents or 10 cents. And, they, and the guy wanted like 10 for a dollar, and I'm like, sure. So I bought just a $2 worth of comics from him, and a bunch of them were these Marvel Universe comics. And there were so many characters, because I was only reading X-Men at the time. I didn't know who the Inhumans were. Um, I knew about the Avengers, because they had crossed over with the X-Men uh, from time to time. Uh, but as far as like the Eternals and characters like that or Moon Dragon, I really knew nothing about those characters. So this came in so handy for kids like me, or I guess adults too at the time, that wanted to know more about the characters, um, that you know wanted to know where they first appeared and who they are, who they're affiliated with. So this was such a cool way to get people caught up. And I wondered if, if I always wonder this because I always, one of my things that I nitpick on some writers about is not knowing the history of these characters. So when they come in, that's Daniel Moonstar, by the way. Um, she's known as Psyche at the time. So is not knowing these characters. And when they come in and write a comic, they have no, these characters are written out of characters. The powers are messed up. And I'm not going to call any writers. There's my boy and who I'm sure some of y'all have been wondering about. Rom. Now, does that mean we're going to get a Rom omnibus from Marvel? Probably not, but it's just nice to see him in a Marvel omnibus, which is crazy. Uh, at least I think so. So that to me is a big deal. And some of you people that are like, who is this idiot looking box robot dude that people keep going on about? Some of the best comic books ever. That's who. Um, where was I? Dang. Oh, yeah, yeah, my point about writers. I always wondered if back then uh, Marvel editors were like, here, here's all 15 issues of the Marvel Universe handbooks. Catch up, because you're going to be writing Avengers, and you're going to need to know all this stuff. So I always wondered if they had to do that. Um, I know in, you know in recent years, probably not. And I love updated versions of this. Um, what I remember after this, though, was in the 90s, they had these like cardstock versions of these... Uh, of this uh, comic books. So they were comic book size cardstock. And uh, if somebody else remembers this in the comments, please let me know. Cause I know I'm not crazy. And I want to say you put them in a binder, like a three ring binder. And it showed you the front of the character, the back and the sides of the character, and then all drawn by different artists. And I always thought that was a cool way to collect them. That looks like a Paul Smith rogue. Funny how she stood out to me. These are all the X-Men at the time. And the New Mutants and then the Allies. Rogue not even considered an X-Man at the time. Interesting. Lelandra. Stevie Hunter. The X-Mansion. Zodiac. Oh, yeah. This is where we get... This is where it becomes fun. This is the stuff I looked at as a kid. I was a morbid little dude. And I always thought, oh, man, it'd be really cool to see who's not alive anymore and what happened to them. So it tells you the character. Gosh, dang. Bucky don't even get that much of a page. He doesn't even get a whole page. That's funny. I guess there wasn't much to write about Bucky. Uh, so it tells you the first modern appearance, the final appearance when he died. Um, it tells you, yeah, how they died. So I was always curious as, as to some of these characters I didn't know about. Like Count Nefaria had appeared in an issue of X-Men. I mean, he's the reason why Thunderbird died. Spoilers for a book that came out in 1975, 1976. But, you know, when I saw this as a kid, I'm like, oh, he's dead? What happened to him? So it tells you the final appearance and how they met their demise. Of course, you know, it's funny to look through something like this when you see inactive or diseased 
um, because so many of these characters have been resurrected or have gotten their powers back. <coughs> and some of them have become just the billboard of resurrection in the comic book universe. Uh, Pip the Troll, like all, all the cosmic characters that are in here have returned in one way or another. I always thought that's funny looking back at this stuff. Except for some, not you, Thunderbird. One day, huh? Torpedo, uh, who ended up joining the New Warriors. One of the greatest comic books ever. Any chance I get to throw New Warriors in there? I will. So this is the stuff right here. This is the stuff I really didn't look at that much. I don't think I even had this issue. This is the Book of Weapons, Hardware, and Paraphernalia. So, uh, okay, like their helmets, Captain America's motorcycle. Wow, they really went into detail. The Dark Hole, that's cool. Dr. Doom's armor. Like I said, of course, yes, it's outdated. The book is almost 40 years old. Or these um, bibli um, these biographies are almost 40 years old. But, oh, that's cool. The Mandarin rings. See, I don't know this stuff. Like, which ring goes where? It's really cool. Rom's armor. Another Rom reference. Yeah. Rom movie confirmed. That's right. Uh, I think this has been everywhere, though. Of course, that's Frank Miller. Um, and if you've been collecting Wolverine and X-Men, you've seen this image so many times. Just looking at his adamantium bones. So this looks like it's taken from the pages of the Marvel Superhero Contest of Champions, which is probably like their first event. By the way, I've been really wanting to do a complete, uh, comprehensive order of events. So that might come out sometime this year. Of like Marvel and then probably DC events. So anyway, these were like a precursor to the handbook. Um, you just kind of get a little bit of a blurb as to who these characters are. Uh, like you have Nightcrawler in here. And you have his first appearance and just a little bit about his ability and who they are. So that's pretty cool that they included those in here. What is this here? The guidebook to the cosmos. The official handbook. Oh, this is just some behind the scenes stuff. Guide sheets. And there's the editor in chief at the time, Jim Shooter. A map of the Marvel bullpen. Can you imagine working at Marvel at the time? Just how close you were with all these wonderful people, all this, all that talent. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so it says that John Byrne's Stark Phoenix art, this one here, was unused and it was modified in the green costume, the Good Phoenix for publication in volume 14. Here are the combined covers. It's all the characters running together and they are combined. I wonder if they ever made a poster of that. The combined covers of issues 13 through 14. Those are done by John Byrne. Find the hate monger. Can you name everyone on the Marvel Universe poster? Now that's a cool contest. I wonder what they gave away. The poster itself was $14.95. Here's the recolored cover. Here's original artwork. So you have John Byrne, Dave Cockerham, John Romita Jr., Mike Zeck, Walter Simonson. That is really awesome. George Perez. I knew that one looked familiar because they used that in the complete collection. Eunice the Untouchable by Paul Smith. I could tell by his face. Yep. And that is that. Let's look at the binding. So here's the eye of the book at 576 pages. That's what you want. As you probably noticed as I was flipping through it, like it really did its job from the beginning to the end, just holding there, laying flat. Hey, see? Carol Danvers, binary at the time. And that was the contents of the book. Let me know in the comments down below if you're picking this up, if you've never heard of this, or if you grew up just collecting these comics, or like I said, those card stocks that they came out with in the 90s. I used to love those things as a kid, and I used to find them so necessary. And you know what? Maybe some writers could benefit from looking at a book like this, or rather an updated book like this. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, and the notifications button. You can also find us on Redbubble and Patreon. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.